In this video, you'll learn how to make easy, elegant display stands for your very best collectible items. They'll be the size you want, shape you want, and even the color you want. Now have a look at this. The barbecue sauce on the left is ordinary barbecue sauce, but the one on the right is collectible barbecue sauce. Can you tell the difference? Yeah, I'm sorry if I seem patronizing, but I must make two points about now. First, if you're proud of it, show it off. And second, sometimes the simplest things make for a lot of very effective showing off, but I like to call it showmanship. Now watch how easy it is to make a custom display stand. First, you cut yourself some cardboard. You crease all four sides. You cut out the corners and fold up the flaps. Tape it all together. Finally, you wrap it or paint it or otherwise just make it pretty, but more on this step a bit later. Went by a little fast, did it? Okay, let's break it down. Perhaps we should start with the tools you're going to need. A utility knife is the best and easiest, or a single edge razor will work just fine, but don't waste your time with a dull blade. It's no fun, makes for sloppy work, and it's dangerous. You'll need something to measure with, and a straight edge. Keeps your fingers out of the way, so to speak. I think the best possible choice would be a framing square if you have one. As for the work surface, a big old cutting board from the kitchen would work, or even a thick stack of newspapers. Greasing the cardboard is easy, a butter knife will work just fine. Now we take up the necessary raw products. Begin with a nice sheet of brand new cardboard from the local packaging store. Clean, with the corners intact, and as big as you can get into your car would be great. But one of those cardboard things they sell in the office supply stores, the ones you or your kids use to make a presentation mount up a science project, these are made out of good stout cardboard of a manageable size and cost all of about three bucks. Actually, this cardboard is so stout it might be great for larger stands, but regular old cardboard is what you want for a smaller stand. Ask for 200 pound test cardboard if you can find a good packaging or shipping store. Paper tape, the kind you have to get wet to get it to stick is best, but it's hard to find. Masking tape works well and is easy to get a hold of. Get a wide roll. About the only thing that is doubtful is shiny plastic packaging tape. Your finish is not apt to stick to such. Have a look at the item you want to showcase. How tall is it and how tall ought it stand to be? I don't know, maybe one-fourth to one-fifth the height of your item. Or if it's going to be behind something, maybe you want it a little bit taller. You will need three dimensions. The width, the height, and the depth. Don't worry if you're not sure. These stands are so easy to make that it's no big deal to make another one if your first one isn't quite right. The point here is not to get all cut up and being too architectural. Begin by figuring out how high you want your stand to be and then double this number. Add it to both the width and the depth. For the mathematically inclined, these are the equations. For those of you that are not so mathematical, don't worry. It will become clear in the next couple of steps. I've decided to make my display stand 2 inches high, 3 inches long, and 4 inches wide. 2 times 2 is 4, and 4 plus 3 is 7, and 4 plus 4 is 8, so I'm making my cardboard blank 7 by 8 inches. Use your tape measure and straight edge. Take your time here. This is perhaps the only really critical part. I've used all manner of bad words at one time or another in my own work, and it's usually because I was sloppy at some earlier step. Lay out lines parallel to the four sides of your rectangle as wide as you want your box to be high. Increase the cardboard. You want to crush the wavy corrugations in the middle and to form the top layer just a little. Rather than all the measuring and marking, you might find something that's as wide as your box is to be high. For example, the two blades on a framing square are one and one half and two inches wide, so I'm good to go. Just a little care now as you cut out all four corners. You just go along the creases then fold up the sides. Tape the corners. I'm using masking tape because it's easy and I want to show you one particular step before we take up finishing. This next step is sort of optional. It's a good idea if you're only going to paint your display stand. But if you're going to cover it with something, it's not necessary. It doesn't hurt a thing one way or the other. So what you need to do is cover up the bottom edge of your display stand. Use a long piece of wide masking tape Run it along the bottom of your box, snip into the corners and fold it over into the box. Once the bottom edge is sealed, rub it against your tabletop. This is about all there is for the making of it. I have some more pointers in advanced display stands and rather a lot to say about paint and such in my faux finishing tutorial. Drop me an email if you have any questions or suggestions. 
and thanks for watching.